So go with me over to John, John 17. Now, let me give you some background here. In John, you know, 14, John 13, Jesus washes feet. 14, 15, and 16, he's teaching about the transition. It's called the Upper Room Discourse. He's teaching about the transition to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He says, I'm leaving. He's coming. You're going to have another helper. You're going to have a comforter, right? And so we would get to John 17. You know, in fact, if you look at verse 1, it's Jesus spoke these words. He lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son may also be glorified, may glorify you. So he's not, he's not left them. They're there watching him. And this is his closing prayer. This is his desire for the church. This is his prayer to God for the church. I can't put enough weight on this for us to understand this. This is a waiting moment for Jesus. He's a, he knows he's going to be, you know, you turn a page or two and he's asking for the cup to be, you know, is there another way, right? You turn a page, he's on the cross, right? So this is it. This is his last prayer, you know, for the church, right? So p let's pick it up in verse 6. And as I go through, I want you to notice the world, right? The world. I want you to notice that we're one, right? And that the world needs to see something. Three things, okay? I have manifested, verse 6, I have manifested your name to men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours. You saved them to me and have kept your word. Now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. For I have given them to them the words which you have given to me, and they have received them and have known them surely that I have come forth from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but those whom you have given me, for they are yours. And all are mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have glorified them in them now I am no longer in the world but these are in the world and I have come to you holy father keep through your name those whom you've given me that they may be one as we are one while I was with them in the world I kept them in your name those whom you have given me I have kept and none of them is lost except the son of perdition that the scriptures might be fulfilled. But now I come to you, and these things I, I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, as I am not of the world. Do you guys see this? It says, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. You sent me into the world. I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified by the truth. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in, in me through the words. They all may be one. You, Father, are in me. I am in you. That they may also be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me, and the glory which you have, have gave me, I have given them that they may be one just as we are one. I and them, you and me, that they may be made perfect in one. And that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. 
Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, and they may behold my glory which you have given me. For you loved me before the foundations of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you. These have known you, that you sent me. And I have declared to them your name, and will declare it, that the love which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. You know, so when you, when you look at this, I mean, it's clear he doesn't want us to be a part of the world. He doesn't want us to be a part of the world. He doesn't want us to be a part of the world system. He doesn't want us to, to, to you know, just buy into the world system. And it's become so difficult for a Christian to stay out of the world because of what's happened. Technology and, and, and what we're, we're, we're being sold and the message from the world, we've, we've morphed into a, a dual system where we're part of the world and part of the church. And, and so we need to understand he, he doesn't want us to be a part of the world. He doesn't want us to be a part of the world system. He doesn't want us to, to, uh, to embrace the world. He doesn't want us to live like the world. He doesn't want us to be in the world. He wants us to be different. And he wants us to be one. He wants us to be one with him and one with each other. So what does it mean to be one? Right? So when you look at the, the scriptures that talk about many people being one, you see the Trinity. Well, that's easy to see, right? You see a marriage, right? You see the two shall be one. But we're to be one. What does that mean? That means that we have a common interest, common goals. We own all things in common. We're going in the same direction. We have the same paradigm in the, of the world. And we're living like each other, right? And what does it mean to be one with him? It means that you'll see in, in this teaching that it means that we are one with Jesus. And he's the leader. We're not. We're to deny ourselves, pick up our cross, and what? Follow him. There's other revelations there in that, you know, sanctify them, renew their minds, right? Change their thinking. You know, and, and where I am, let them come to me, heaven. Jesus prays all of that here. And, and so Romans 10, verse 8. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe, that's faith, in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made uh, unto salvation. You know, so, you know, for years we've been saying that prayer, right? You know, and, and it's not wrong to say the prayer. It, you know, but here's the thing. Salvation is not... It, 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 first of all, salvation is the wedding to a marriage. It's not the marriage. It's an event, right? Salvation has three tenths in the Bible, past, present, and future. When you study salvation, it's, it's the, our spirits get born again, we're alive to God. Now we go on the renewing process. You know, we can drop the ball. The sower and the seed drops the ball. That's the word of God going into their heart. And, you know, whether it's the cares of this world or whatever it may be. So what we've done is we've changed salvation and faith to accommodate man's interest. And not look at what the word of God says. And so when, when you look at the word of God and you look at what the word says, it's very important that we understand what does faith mean to God? What, what does faith mean to God? How does he describe it? What did Jesus want us to do? His level of commitment was all in. He wants us all in. He wanted the rich young ruler to sell everything he had to pick up his cross and to follow him, right? And so that's what he's looking for. That's the faith for salvation. Now, you know, I understand that there's baby Christians and we come in and we grow and we learn, but we need to start teaching 
this. We need to start teaching this to each other and to the church so that we understand, you know, what God requires of us. You know, what is his requirement? And that's what James does in his book. You know, when you, when you look at, you know, by grace we have been saved through faith, it's easy to say, but what does that word faith mean? That's what we bring to the table, right? And so, you know, when you look at Titus chapter 1, verse 16, it says, they profess to know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable, disobedient, disqualified from every good work. You know, when you go through the Bible, Jesus talked about this. And we need to get back to what it really means. Because it says what it means, and it means what it says. It doesn't matter that it's 2024. It doesn't matter. We, we, you know, uh, God, we serve a God who created stars 200 billion light years away, right? He can write a book for us today, right? And so when, when we look at salvation, the true church... We need to start teaching about walking in holiness, walking in the Word of God, obeying the Word of God, surrendering out of the world to a loving Savior. Amen.